I've spent the last four years learning from the most brilliant marketers today. And now I've left my nine to five to take the plunge and build my million dollar business. The real question is, how will I do it without VC funding or debt completely from scratch? This podcast is here to give you the answer. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply, and share marketing strategies to grow my online business using only today's best internet sales funnels. My name is Steve Larson, and welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. Hey, I want to dive into a principle today that I think would be really helpful for you guys. And the difference is, okay, what's the difference between leads and opt-ins? Because there is a huge difference. And it it might look the exact same, like the function of putting your email in, like, oh, I got leads. But when you actually think about sales psychology itself, you actually might not be getting a lead at all, okay? When I was doing, I, 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 how many guys did door-to-door sales? Any door-to-door sales people? Okay, door-to-door sales taught me something really, really powerful. Um, was I handed a list of people who were leads? Was I handed a list of people who were asking for pest control information? Because I was not—I was selling pest control, right? And I go around, I knock on the door, and when I knock on the door, I'd walk up to the door, and right, I'd knock, and when I would knock. Uh, someone would answer the door. Now the act of them answering the door and engaging in a conversation with me, are they a lead yet? Are they a lead yet? No, right? No, they're not. When do they become a lead? Okay, this is important to, to notice. I'm bringing this up because there's times when I've gone through and I'm looking at somebody's funnel and I'm like, oh, sweet funnel, this is actually a really cool funnel. They're like, look how many leads I'm getting. And I'm like, your leads aren't really coming until it's like step two. They're like, what do you mean? But the opt-ins are, you know what I mean? Like looking at what they've created. I just wanted you guys to, to, to pay attention to the fact that a lead, I'm sorry, and somebody who opts in for something is not necessarily a lead, all right? Classic example of this, okay? Let's say that you're gonna go in and you have a, okay, check this out. You have a, like a PDF that you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna give somebody. You have a PDF and you have a page here with a headline. I'm just drawing this real quick. So you got a page here with a headline. Um, download this cool free PDF. You know, put your email address down below. Right, and then they have a button. A button, then we have this page right here. Okay, it's kind of like a, this is a standard lead magnet page, right? Here's the headline. Download your free PDF, which says yada, yada, yada. Right, and then go into email, and you put your email in and download it so we know where to send you the PDF. Now, let's say that after this page, what you're actually wanting them to go do is buy, let's say your, your um, let's say it's a software trial, okay? okay? And what you really want them to go do eventually is take this list, because now you got them on a list, right? So gonna be a list here that gets created. And because they're on a list now that you have, right, you got this email sequence that's pushing them back to the software, right? So they opt in, you put them on a list and all these emails are pushing them back to go get the software, 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 software. If somebody opts in, are they actually a lead yet? Right? A lot of times, no. It depends if you started talking about the software on the first page. If you didn't, they're not really a lead yet. A lead is somebody who has interest. That's it. So when I was knocking and they open the door, let's say they kind of opted in, right? They opted in, but they, they're not really a lead until they say, right? Um, like when I made the list of those I needed to follow back up with at the end of each day, I was looking at my leads, but the leads weren't the thing. It wasn't every single door that was on the street. I was like, you know what? There were like two people who were like really interested. A lead is somebody who's genuine. A lead is somebody who expresses interest, actual interest. And opt-in, they could just opt-in because they want the free PDF, right? An opt-in is more like an act. A lead is, is like an act in the sales process. But an opt-in is just an act to get the thing. It's, it's, it's the act of getting on the list. A lead, they're actually, does that make sense? Opt-in, I'm opting in for whatever gets me on the list. Lead, I'm actually showing interest in the sales process. And, and I'm saying this because it's a, it's a powerful difference. And... Uh, it might sound like, so what, Steven? Like, well, understand that that the whole reason why you want to build this list is to sell, like, let's say in this case, software, right? So on the first page, I'm really, the, 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 the sooner I can get them 
into the zone of wanting, of like creating a pre-frame for what the software I'm going to talk about in this case. I, I want them to be pre-framed on the first page. So this PDF, let's say it was about cooking, right? That's definitely not a lead list for software, right? I'm going to want to make a PDF here, let's say in this case, where there's a PDF, there's a, it, it's a funnel where I'm like, hey, download this free PDF on the top 25 agencies to hire to build your next software or app, right? Now that now I would say that's that's much closer to an actual lead, right? They're showing a, a genuine interest. As I'm saying this because what'll happen sometimes is there's a people will come to me and they'll be like, Stephen, I have a someone gave me a list of three million people. I have three million leads. And I'm like, no, you don't, <laughs> right? You have a random list of three million people. You, those aren't leads though. You need to do things to them to create them as leads before you send them to the actual thing you want them to buy anyways. Is this helping? Let me get your comments here, guys, real quick. Uh, when they're giving their info and say they're interested. Yeah, right, definitely, right? Prospect versus lead. Exactly, right? Like, uh, yeah. Uh, man, we'll have to be rewatched soon. <laughs> Sweet. Dude, you are awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Leads, someone who has interest. You said it while I was typing. Got it. Big difference. Yeah, it's a huge difference. Big, big, big difference. And the only reason I'm telling you that is because... It, what what'll happen sometimes is when let's say let's say I've got a funnel here right and I've created this cool offer and I want to sell this offer on the first page. Let's say I have a uh, let's say I have a hundred people who opt in, but it's not actually something that's related to the actual thing I'm looking to sell, right? The, it, they're way less quality. So the whole idea is that on the first page. I want to create a pre-frame. I want to create whatever they're downloading. It needs to be a pre-frame. needs to be something that there's two things I really look for. Okay. I only want to sell to those who have, have a pre-existing desire for the thing I'm selling. Okay. That's super key and it will shortcut half of your headaches in all of this game. Okay. The target, right. I'll just, I'll, I'll draw a little target here. The, the target that I'm going for, right. The target person. We'll draw this as a person. Okay. The target person has <laughs> a target on their head. The target person that I'm going for is they need to have a pre-existing desire. They a pre-existing disposition for whatever it is that I'm going to go sell. But the second thing is that on the first page, the very first interaction I have with them right here. Okay. Right here. The very first interaction I have with them it needs to set them up for whatever they're going to see next. But one of the things I've noticed is that people will go in and they'll start creating a list, but they think the list size is the thing that makes like all the difference. It really doesn't if it's not actually preframing them for whatever you're going to send them to next. You just have opt-ins, not leads, right? And so I, what I want you to go do, and the re, what I want you, here, here's here's why this is important. Okay, let's say that I have a 10% opt-in rate on my uh, on my first order page here. And let's say that it is an 8% on OTO number one, right? And then let's say that it's a 2% opt-in rate on OTO number two. Okay. Now, let's say this is a, f a front end funnel. Now, when I say that, right, this is a, the prices in here are a little bit cheaper. Um, it's not like your high end stuff. It's not like the biggest done for you services kind of thing. It's not the expensive stuff, right? It's the, it's the low end of the value ladder things, right? In this scenario, this funnel. Are the conversion rates of 10%, 8%, and 2% acceptable, right? Yeah, right? And I've had people say like, man, like, well, I want more. Like, how can I increase the conversion? You could increase the conversion rate and spend all this time doing it. And I'm not saying that's not a bad thing to go do. Or you literally can just focus on getting a better quality lead in the door and it will probably increase your conversions anyway. You know what I'm saying? Changing the offer is not always the answer. Changing the sales message is way easier than changing the offer. And then what's way easier than changing the sales message or offer is changing who you're talking to. And then what's even easier than that is just changing the first thing that they opt into and let's say it's free, All right? Just change that and then you get a better, it, it literally attracts a different person to you so the better people are seeing the better things in the back. You know what I mean? The better things are actually getting a chance to buy from you in the back end. Hopefully that makes sense. And my drawing that, hopefully it kind of clarifies that. But when you look at like the list of stuff and you know, I look, I look, I look at a lot of funnels, lots of funnels. 
And when I'm looking at all these funnels, people are like, what should I change? And they'll be like, oh man, it looks like OTO is sucking it up, right? OTO number two is, is bad. Look at that 2% conversion. Oh, that that's super bad. It may be that I am just have never been in the market to buy a pink Volkswagen and you offered me to buy a pink Volkswagen. You know what I mean? It's not, it wasn't the offer all along. It was actually, you're just talking to the wrong person and you gave me the wrong preframe. You're talking about cooking and now we're talking about cars? Like what? Right, so message all being on one point and then message attracting a target customer who's rich, who has a pre-existing desire to buy the thing you're gonna talk about anyway so it's an easier sale on your side, right? Then when they start moving down the line, it's like, oh, no, of course I'll buy a pink Volkswagen. I've always wanted a pink Volkswagen. You gave me a PDF here or something free, um, a little mini course or whatever on how to take care of my pink Volkswagen, right? And then you gave me a course here on uh, recordings from cool coaches on how to drive pink Volkswagens the best. And then you gave me a, uh, um, then you gave me a little bit of a subscription here on the best kinds of gas that we're going to ship out to you for your pink Volkswagen. We know what? Why don't you just buy a pink Volkswagen? I'm like, yeah, right. Uh, but too many times there's like huge message differences and and because of that it's not a natural flow in the upsells and it's you can either change go through all the worry of trying to change the offer or that's that's more challenging or change the message not as challenging but still challenging or change the front end thing that they opt into which can be challenging as well or just change who you're talking to easiest thing to switch just change the customer way easier than changing the offer okay so that's 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 the only reason I wanted to do this with you guys today, okay? Huge mega difference between leads and opt-ins. So the thing to ask yourself is that for the, go look at your funnel, go look at your funnel stats. I would recommend that you draw it out. There's something to that, I don't know. But when you're going through and you're looking at all your stats and you're looking at all the pieces that are in there, ask yourself the question, are these actually leads or are they opt-ins? And how can I take my opt-ins and turn them into interested leads in what I'm gonna sell them to? And one of the easiest ways to do it, fix your pre-frame, okay? Fix your pre-frame, fix the person that you're targeting, way easier to do that way. Last little piece, and I'll dive off here. Um, I was also a telemarketer, okay? And, and, and what's funny is, uh, so I did two summers of door-to-door -door sales, and um, it's not like I was handed a list, I was handed a neighborhood, right? I was handed a neighborhood, and I go and I walk around, and I'm knocking doors, and people are opting in by starting a conversation. Leads, though, did not happen unless there's actual interest. But when I got to telemarketing, I show up. I remember it was my first day. I was excited to do it. I sit down, and I was one of the top guys for a while. I became a team leader there, and I was training a bunch of teams there, and I liked phone sales. I, was, I, was, I wasn't bad at it, actually. It was me and this other guy. He and I would go back and forth between number one. And um, uh, Anyway, so I was, I was doing these phone sales, and I wasn't bad at it, and... Um, they would go and they'd buy these lead lists. But they were, what was hard was to realize that the people that they were buying lists from, they weren't actually qualified. Meaning they weren't leads. They were people, they just farmed out people who were most likely to buy something, but they didn't show any genuine interest. Basically they were buying opt-in lists, right? They were buying huge lists of contact information. So it was straight cold calls. What would have made it a lead is if they had interest in it. So you notice one of the ways that we do this in application funnels, like high ticket stuff in order to turn them from an opt-in to a lead really quickly off the first page, right? Actually, it's on the second page that we do it. On an a high ticket application page or funnel, at the very beginning of the very first page, what we'll do is we'll say, hey, start your application process here, opt in so we can send you a little mini course so you kind of know what it is that we're talking about. So they opt in here on the first page, on the next page is the actual application. Now, what happens to somebody when they go through an application that says, tell me why we should allow you to pay us? That's a pretty hot lead. That is way, right? Because they're going to put their email in again over here. The distance, the, 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 the selling psychology difference and distance between this page and this page is monumental. Okay, so I'll tell you right now, on one of my high ticket funnels right now, or my application funnels, I should say, for every 100 people who opt in right here, about 20%, 20 of them actually f uh, complete the application here. That is the difference between opt ins and leads. Here, I'm getting a 100 opt ins, and here, from the 100, I'm getting only 20 leads. Does that make sense? And so I'm, I'm telling you to do this because it will actually 
helps so much of the pressure in your business if you actually know, you know what, I'm actually turning these people into a lead. They have genuine interest in the thing that I'm selling and they've said that and they want it. And they're like, give me more information and please, can we talk, right? Versus someone who's just like, I, I got them on a list, right? Our list right now is about 40,000 people and they're not all leads for every product I have. What I need to do is I need to tell that list, a lot of them you're on, right? You're on a lot of those lists, okay? What I need to do is I need to tell those people on my list, hey, do you want this cool thing about X, Y, and Z that you don't know is really a pre-frame for the thing I'm hoping to go buy later on, <laughs> right? All right, then they become a lead for just that product. A lead in one product is not a lead for another product, okay? Anyway, hopefully that's been helpful to you guys. Um, exactly, Facebook gives you access to a list of 2.2 billion people, but they need to filter first before you sell them all. Exactly, Sebastian, 100%. This is the most information I've ever learned. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey, you're funny. Uh, make your opt-in algorithm, or make your opt-in align with what you're actually selling down the line. Yeah, yeah, you wanna figure out how you can pre-frame people the hardest the fastest early on in the funnel because as they progress down the funnel and it's the first time they see like oh man pink Volkswagen anyway uh, legal pad pigs <laughs> love it uh, I grew up in the tree business and own a tree service for 16 years when someone had a dead tree in their yard I knocked on the door when they agreed to listen to my pitch they naturally had a disposition and desire for the service to remove the dead tree right now I do this in the insurance industry exactly Right, you can go try to convince somebody who has not had a major event in, in, in their life to have insurance, or find those people who have had a major event in their life. Here's insurance. Who has a greater predisposition to go purchase? Right, obviously those who had the big event in their life. Um, yeah, buying random lists is the worst. Hundred percent the worst. There was one time in real estate where I did this, um, and it actually was leads. Okay, um, kind of. First, it was just a list. Okay, what, what we did is we went and um, it was a service where you could, what they, would, what they did is they grabbed the list of all the people who had somebody pass away recently in their life and they inherited a house or a property, right? So it's, it's called the inheritees list. It's, the, it's an inheritee. So I wanted to go in and get a huge mega list of all the inheritees in my local area, okay? So that's a list. How do I turn them to a lead? So what we did is we, we had a huge list and it was like probably, I think it was a thousand, it was a thousand names of people who had inherited a property in the last like 90 days, okay? And a lot of them is because there was a major live event, life event, right? Someone passed away, right? And so they inherited a property. They were, they, through the will, through a will, they inherited a title for a property. And a lot of them just wanted to sell it for cash. So I was like, well, let me go be the guy on that and take the cut in between. So what we did is we, in order to take the thousand person list and turn them into leads, right? It's a mechanism. It's a, it's a it's something, anyway, it's a mechanism. So what we did is um, I ended up getting, I ended up getting about a hundred of them to call me. And this was how I grabbed a legal pad and I grabbed a red pen and I wrote on there, I'm so sorry for your loss. In fact, I got one of them around here somewhere. Um, hey, I just want you to know I'm in the area and I'm actually looking to buy a property like yours um, quickly. Uh, and for cash, we'll make it quick. Let me know if you're interested. And here's my name, my address, my phone number. And it was super, it was like triple space down this thing. And then we folded it up kind of rough, put it in an envelope and we didn't seal it. <laughs> put stamps on crooked, right? Wrote on it with big red letters on there. It, this thing stood out so hard, right? It's a huge eyesore. And my wife and I would spend tons of time in the evenings. This is like when we first got married. And we would write out all these legal letters. You know, they're called yellow letters. And we wrote out lots, hundreds of these yellow letters. And we'd ship them on out to people. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we had like 100 people call back. And about half of them were freaked out thinking I was taking their house. And I was like, no, 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 read, read the letter. We're trying to see if we can buy it from you. And since they just wanted to get rid of it, we could talk them down on price based on what the market was, the market value. And then I would go find buyers and match them and take the spread in between. And that was the plan and it didn't really work, but <laughs> we ended up having 300 phone calls in a month, 300 phone calls, right? Those were leads. This is just a list. So when you have people coming into your list and you're like, I have all these people, how come only like when I send out a broadcast of like 18,000 emails to one of my lists, one of my general Seinfeld lists, I'll get 
usually a 30 to 40 percent open rate let's say 20 20 to 40 so okay 30 30 percent open rate and then of those that open it's usually a 10 to 20 percent click right so just because they're on the list doesn't mean they're lead and i'm gonna go turn them into a lead okay that's that's one of the most amazing powers of funnels ever it's funny because some people in the click funnels will be like well i'm not selling anything on the internet so i don't know if i can use click funnels they'll be like what you're taking leads and then you're washing them and qualifying them. And I'm sorry, you're taking lists and you're washing them and you're qualifying them and sifting them on down to your actual leads. And it actually saves you tons of time because I'm only going to talk to those who have genuine interest in what it is I'm going to go sell them. You see what I'm saying? Anyway, if you guys like this stuff, come to Offermind. All right, there's my, there's my uh, unapologetic plug. Boom. If you're just starting out, you're probably studying a lot. That's good. You're probably geeking out on all the strategies also, right? That's also good. But the hardest part is figuring out what the market wants to buy and how you should sell it to them, right? That's also what I struggled with for a while until I learned the formula. So I created a special mastermind called an offer mind to get you on track with the right offer and more importantly, the right sales script to get it off the ground and sell it. Wanna come? There's small groups on purpose so I can answer your direct questions in person for two straight days. You can hold your spot by going to offermind.com. Again, that's offermind.com.